All right, welcome everybody. I'm Britta Dimler, and tonight we're talking about grief and loss. Uh, we titled this class saying goodbye. And I just want to really kind of think you to think about, uh, I think a lot of times when we, when we talk about grief and loss, we think about a death and, you know, maybe of a loved one or someone that we're close to or, um, but I want you to think about other ways that you could grieve or that you do grieve. Uh, some of us are really good at grieving. <laughs> like we are, our emotions are, we wear them on our sleeve, right? And, and um, they come out a lot. And some of us are really, really good at stuffing and not acknowledging. And not that we don't acknowledge grief or loss, but that we just don't let other people see that. And so wherever you are on the spectrum and whatever it is that you're grieving, um, I just want to encourage you and let you know that there's hope and that there is um, just options for you as you deal with this to really um, to, to thrive, even though you are grieving. Okay. So those are some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, grief is actually a natural response to loss. Uh, sometimes we might think we're a little crazy, right? Because it's emotional suffering. We feel when something or someone that we love is taken away. Um, it can often feel overwhelming and you may experience all kinds of difficult and unexpected emotions from shock and anger to disbelief, guilt, profound sadness. Uh, but grief overall is a, rea a rela ugh, reaction to loss. And grief may be experienced as sadness. And, and many people just kind of, you know, feel sad all the time. Now, we, you know, I started this saying that it's more than just the death of someone. Um, I've realized recently, you know, as I've, as I'm raising adult children now, um, that I have a friend of mine pointed out to me that, um, you know, cause I've been struggling with some of their beliefs and some of their choices and whatnot. And she pointed out that really I am grieving the loss of, um, or well, the expectation, what I thought the expectation of the relationship would be. And boy, was that a humbling thought, right? Because um, we all have expectations of other people and maybe even of ourselves. And when we meet those or maybe don't meet those and think about for your job or for your, you know, your friend group or for really any, um, any situation that you're in, when things don't work out the way we want, we can experience grief or a loss there. And so when my friend um, pointed that out to me that I was, you know, really, I am grieving the, the, what I expected a relationship to look like with my adult children, it kind of put all of my emotions or not all of them, but it put a lot of them into perspective for me. And I thought, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm not, um, you know, I'm not making this up or it's not just me. I mean, it truly, you know, yes, it's my experience. Um, and they don't necessarily feel the same way I do. Right. But what can I do then with those emotions and how can I make those emotions work for me? Um, and how can I even acknowledge them in the process? Okay. And so that's part of the things that I want to kind of talk about tonight. Um, I know some of you are grieving um, potential losses, right? Of maybe um, parents or spouses or kids that um, are failing in health or are failing in, um, in, in, I don't want to say failing in choices, but, you know, may, making choices that maybe we don't love or don't, don't want the most. Um, maybe part of it is, you know, well, I, I know there's a newlywed on here and maybe you know, part of it is like you're grieving your singlehood and, uh, and those, so it's can be those life changes and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It means that something in my life has changed, right? When we, um, I put in the, in the class description, we can grieve like graduations. Um, I have, a, I'll have a senior next year in both college and high school. And it's my high schooler is going to be my last, the last one at home. And so, you know, even though we're going to celebrate everything that um, all the experiences she's, she's going to have in the next year, there's going to be probably be a part of me that grieves because like, we we're talking about the first day of school um, last night, I think. And I said, you know, this is going to be like your last first day, right? Oh my gosh, I'm getting teary just thinking about this. Um, and even though there are times that I'm like, yay, <laughs> she, it's her last year. Um, there's other times that I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's just, it's that mixed bag. So I just want to encourage you that if you're in any of these 
limbo kind of periods or where you're like, I don't even know what this emotion is. I don't know what's going on inside of me. I think a lot of times we joke and we kind of dismiss grief as, oh, I'm just hormonal or I'm just PMSing or I just am sad or whatever. And I think when we um, give it, uh, can label it more of what it is and what we're experiencing when we can identify that, it can give you a piece through that process. So hopefully that'll make sense. Um, okay. So let's chat about a couple of myths about grief, first of all, um, because grief really does, it affects everyone, but it's different for everybody. There's no right or wrong way to feel when you're grieving. Uh, but there are some common beliefs about grieving that, that people hold, um, and you might compare yourself to how other people grieve, right? Um, or deal with their loss. And so I just want you to think about, um, you know, am I, again, kind of those expectations? Am I holding an expectation of someone else? Like, why aren't they grieving enough or whatever? So there, the first myth I just want to kind of address quickly is there's a right way to grieve, which is not true, <laughs> okay? Because again, grief affects everyone differently. Some people cry, some yell. Some people need time alone and others want to be surrounded by people. Um, there's no right or wrong way to grieve. And what helps you feel better one day may not work the next day. So, and I think a lot of times, um, even as we're, you know, maybe struggling with a relationship that's changing or someone's health that's changing, you know, we might be like, okay, I, I'm putting on the strong face. I'm just going to power through this. And that works for a while. Um, but if it's a prolonged period, it is very, um, wearying for us. Right. And we get tired and, um, and again, those emotions just come up all over. So I think it's really important to recognize and just to identify and to be honest, especially with people that we love and care about and that care about us. Um, and if you're feeling alone, that you use it as a time to reach out to other people and say, hey, I need help today. I need some support um, as I'm, you know, grieving or as I'm just going through this process or, or whatever. So I think that we, you know, we have to remember to take care of ourselves through some of it. Okay. Um, and that goes along with the next myth that, that the pain will go away faster if you ignore it right? Or if we fully experience it, either one, I think you can go to the extreme of that. Like I'm going to just, I'm going to experience it all right now. And then it's just going to be gone. Um, or I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist. And many of us try this a lot, um, but ignoring our pain or, you know, trying to keep it from surfacing only makes it worse in the long run. Honestly, for real healing, it's necessary to face your grief and actively deal with it. Now that, that does not mean that we jump headlong in and just cry all the time or, you know, um, and, and sit on the couch and don't do anything. Okay. And I think that that's, that's kind of those extreme things that we picture in our minds, um, uh, that happen. And so bring it back into the middle of, you know, there are some days again, that I might be like, yes, I can function really well. And some days that I just need to cry and, um, yeah. So, you know, figuring out where you're at in that is, is important and bringing in outside help is important. Okay. So another myth is that it's important to be strong in the face of loss. So the fact is that feeling sad, frightened, lonely is normal responses to loss and crying does not mean that you're weak. Um, don't feel the need to protect your family or friends by putting on a brave front, showing your true feelings can help them and you. And I think that sometimes, um, well, I'll just share a personal story. I, you know, I've had several miscarriages and I've realized in the last couple of years, and I think this goes back to those expectations I was talking about, you know, like how my life would be with my adult children, um, that I, I've realized recently that I never grieved the process of the miscarriages and I've never, um, like, I don't know that I didn't cry over them. I think I did, but I don't, I think I, you know, like I grieved and then I'm like, okay, I'm, we're moving on. Cause back when I lost those babies, we didn't, people didn't talk about it um, as much. And I, I think that um, I've noticed in the last couple of years, I've, I am much more emotional, like teary um, as I'm empathizing with someone else. And I'm much more, um, which is sometimes uncomfortable for me because I'm like, okay, why am I, I'm crying like more than, you know, other people maybe. Um, or I just am really, I feel really emotional. And I feel like, 
okay, I just have to breathe and, 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 um, keep it, keep it in. Right. Um, <clears throat> or be strong. And, you know, sometimes that's not, that's not true. Most of the time it's not true. We need to allow ourselves to feel that grief or that loss or the emotion, whatever it is. And I find oftentimes when I'm, when I feel it, um, and then I can move through it, uh, work through it faster too. And sometimes it's okay to have people to be like, empathize with you and give you a hug for going through it. Right. Or they, they can, they know that you're, you're really feeling, um, feeling uh, empathizing with them. So then this kind of goes along again with the next myth is, is, is if you don't cry, it means you're not sorry about the loss. Um, crying is a normal response to sadness. This is the fact part of it, but it's not the only one. And those who don't cry may feel pain just as deeply as others. They may simply have no other ways of showing it, or they might not, they just might not be comfortable in showing it. So I think just being around people and allowing them and saying, you know what, I'm here for you. If you want to cry, sometimes I have noticed that, um, when I get emotional or, you know, like I'm empathizing with somebody and they can see my, my eyes turn up that it's like giving them permission to feel their feelings as well. Right. And that's not why I'm doing it. Cause sometimes, you know, a lot of times I just can't help it. Um, but it allows them to be like, Oh, okay. I I'm safe. If I cry, cause sometimes it's, you know, it's a vulnerable feeling to have those emotions and to be right there. Uh, okay. The next myth, there's a couple more. The grief should last about a year. I don't know who ever put a, a time frame on, <laughs> on grieving. Um, but it, you know, there is no time frame really for grieving. Um, there's no right and wrong and, and how long it takes can differ from person to person and allowing people to experience that. Now I will say though, if it's been, you know, multiple years and somebody is still as, as deeply embedded in their grief, um, then they may need some extra help, right. And they may need that extra support and encouragement to seek help. Um, but I think especially, you know, as, well, just as life happens, and again, as relationships change, I think, you know, we can, there are, t there are periods that we would grieve through that time period. Um, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, like I, I had a very estranged relationship with my dad for probably 25 years, and I had, I, it was a strain because I had boundaries that I needed to put in place to protect me and my, and my family. And, um, when he died, he, he passed away in, uh, I think it was December of 20. Um, you know, so COVID was happening all then and, and all the things with, um, you know, like limited numbers at funerals and all of that is either 20 or 21. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I, I thought I had grieved for 25 years, right. Over this, I, I had grieved the loss of that relationship, but when he actually passed away, I grieved again in, a, in another way. I think that um, like there was never going to be reconciliation, right? And so I, I had grieved in a, you know, at a point to a point, and then I still had to allow myself to grieve again. Um, and it didn't last a long time because I'd already, I, you know, there's a lot of it, that process I'd already gone through. I'm thinking about people who... Um, and I, I know somebody here is, is going through a health challenge with their spouse and um, watching them deteriorate over time. And, you know, uh, that you're, you're going through this grieving process all along. And I think that sometimes then when the next step happens, right, in our heads, again, we have an expectation of what it will be like. Um, we, can, we can put ourselves in that like, well, okay, well, um, you know, cause for a long time I thought, well, if he, if he, if my dad dies, then, you know, it, it, I'll just move on. Cause it's, you know, I've already grieved it. And so it kind of took me, um, it caught me off guard a little bit, I guess I would say that the day that I just cried, um, and really felt the loss. Um, but I think it was really healing for me in that, in that way too. So hopefully that makes sense. And, you know, again, there's no, there's no time period, and there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. It's, it's whatever's right for you. Um, but if you feel like you're stuck, reach out for help, you know, or if you feel like you're, um, yeah, just if you're, you know, like it's been too long, or if you're wondering even about, you know, okay, okay should I still be here or should I, you know, maybe that's when you talk to a trusted friend and, and reach out 
um, and using some of the products that we're going to talk about in just a minute is, is going to be impactful as well. Okay, and uh, one other myth, another myth is moving on with your life means you're forgetting the one you lost. Uh, and the fact is that really moving on means you've accepted their their death or the, the loss of that, right? It's not the same as forgetting. Uh, you can create a new life and still keep your loved one's memory as a part of you. So just remember that uh, and give yourself permission to um, to live life again. And, you know, again, I think sometimes we have that expectation, like, well, if they're gone, then I can't, I can't, you know, do the next thing or whatever. And then the last myth is that friends can help by not bringing up the subject. And people who are grieving usually want and need to talk about their loss. Uh, bringing up the subject can make it easier to talk about. And, um, you know, it's it kind of, it's it's that weird taboo thing, right? And so I think sometimes just, you know, letting people know, hey, I'm, I'm here for you. I care about you. Um, any of those kinds of things can be really beneficial. Um, so there are sta several stages of grief, um, and I, it, people who experience a loss grow through, go through this grieving process uh, with some common elements, but remember, grief is not a predictable progression of stages, um, but understanding different stages of grief can help you in, um, with the grieving process. There's no order to this, okay? So I just want to reemphasize that because I think sometimes people think, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to be in shock and denial at first. Well, if you've been dealing with this for a long time, maybe you're in anger right now. You know, maybe you're in, you know, something, another um, stage and you might be like, okay, well, I'm, I think I'm four stages in and now I'm back to stage two. And it's not, there's no right or wrong on this. Just remember that it's, um, and there's no order and the stages of grief are more as a reference to, um, you know, and kind of a guide, um, I'm sorry, a reference instead of a guide on how to grieve. Okay. Cause again, you're going to go, you might jump around. So the first stage most people think about is shock and denial. And again, this could be that the, somebody, I, I just lost somebody in a car accident or, a um, even, you know, like I just got a call that, that they're gone, or it could be that I got a diagnosis or, you know, like we we're talking about expectations and just realizing what's going on. This isn't the way I thought it was going to be. Right. So in, in this, um, phase, individuals often find themselves feeling detached and numb from the situation. You may doubt the reality of, um, of the lost one, you know, you know that it's happened, but, but it doesn't feel real. And so you kind of in that shock and denial stage, um, when you're in this stage, so characteristics, like I said, it might feel, um, like feeling numb or shocked, um, <clears throat> being confused and disoriented, maybe shutting down and being unable to process emotions, um, it could be forgetting about the loss, you know, like you wake up and you're like, oh, everything's good. And then all of a sudden it hits you again. Right. Um, avoiding reminders, sleeping more than usual and procrastinating, deal dealing with the loss and its consequences. So coping with this denial stage is, um, really to, first of all, to acknowledge the feelings, <laughs> to acknowledge the, um, the loss and the the shock of it all, right? Um, maybe reflecting on some of it. Um, in the wake of a loss, it can sometimes be challenging to picture what your life will look like afterwards, or even seeing that there is a tomorrow to come. Um, so small steps, you know, and, and again, giving yourself permission to grieve, I think is a big part of, of that shock and denial. Um, the second stage that people often um, will identify is guilt. Uh, this, you know, sometimes individuals may unrealistically blame themselves for things they had no control over and guilt causes you to punish yourself and keeps us focused on the past. So, you know, why do we experience guilt and grief? We might believe that we did something wrong, that maybe this was my fault or, um, I, you know, I, I didn't do enough, right? That can be part of the grief um, or, or the guilt part. Um, because we feel like we did something wrong. Um, oh, it's just thinking of feeling like it because we want order, you know, being in um, a grieving, uh, grieving time or experiencing loss can sometimes feel chaotic. And like, I have no control over things. Um, I know when, when my daughter was diagnosed with leukemia back when she was five, she had no control. She was grieving and I was grieving as well because I, I couldn't control that. I couldn't, there was nothing I could do at the time. 
to um, to help her, right? I couldn't take that disease, um, that diagnosis away from her. And so again, grieving what I thought her childhood would look like, um, grieving what I thought our, our family would look like at that time. Um, wishing maybe that we had done more can, can create guilt or maybe we're just too hard on ourselves can create guilt. You know, we, we pile that on ourselves or we're looking for someone else to blame. So tips for coping with guilt is to acknowledge the guilt as a normal grief emotion. Um, consider what your guilt is about, talk it over with others. Like I've, I've mentioned several times and just examining your thoughts, um, it, and, examining is, is my guilty feelings, are they irrational, right? And, and then admit to that, like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't change her diagnosis. There was nothing I did at the time that created my daughter's diagnosis. Um, but there was a lot of guilt that, you know, like I questioned everything that we had done at the time. Um, finding positive thoughts to balance your guilt thoughts, uh, can be helpful. And then forgiving ourselves or forgiving other people, maybe, uh, the next stage of grief uh, is anger. And this one you may be living in. <laughs> you may know people living in anger. Um, your pain may be redirected and expressed as, as anger, irritability, rage, lashing out, or even unwarranted blame. And this stage involves acknowledging some that some things have changed in anger towards your new reality. So, you know, those thoughts of this isn't fair. Why is this happening to me? Um, maybe I'm to blame or they're to blame for this and, and really focusing on that and keeping that at the forefront. Um, wondering, you know, how could God let this happen? I asked that a lot <laughs> uh, back then, you know, or take it from her and give it to me. You know, like, why would you put this on my child kind of a thing? Um, nobody understands or, you know, they deserve to pay if it's, you know, cause maybe it was an accident or something. So cope tips for coping with anger is to get to the root of the anger and really start to look at those thoughts. Um, and again, this is something that you may not be able to do yourself, but you need help with, or you need somebody to just bounce those ideas off of, um, digging into other emotions. So, you know, what else are you feeling besides anger? Anger can cover up a whole lot of things. Um, and then leaning into your pain, you know, don't, um, don't work to turn it off or avoid it, but go ahead and feel it. You know, sometimes this helps us continue to move through the grief is when we actually feel the pain. Um, I know that, you know, think about, well, we've talked, we talk a lot about, um, emotions that we deal with or that we have. And when we don't deal with them how they become physical illness, right. Um, or dis-ease it's dis, um, dis-ease in the body. And so our body, when we don't deal with the emotion, our brain shoves that emotion somewhere in the body and it comes out in oftentimes in, um, disease, disease, right. Or pain or whatever. And so, especially if it's something that's an ongoing thing, you know, it might be worth it to look, to grab that feelings buried alive book, or, um, this is a new book I, I got recently. It's called, it's called your body's telling you love yourself. Um, and I'll put this in the comments later. It's by, um, Lise, L I S E, uh, Borbo, B O U R B E A U. And it's, it's similar to the feelings buried alive, but I really like this because, uh, it, she breaks the, physical ailments down into physical blocks, emotional blocks, mental blocks, and spiritual blocks. And sometimes, you know, seeing it, it, um, in, par in paragraph form, like explained can be really, um, opening for us in acknowledging and understanding and going, Oh, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling now. Okay. So anger, that's anger. Anger is a big one. Uh, the next stage might be bargaining, or, you know, you may be, you may know people who are in the bargaining phase. Um, so this is individuals try and hold on to hope in a situation of intense pain. You may feel you'd be willing to do anything or sacrifice anything to bring your loved ones back or to bring their health back. I, I, again, I remember laying in the hospital chair, especially at night when I'd be alone with my daughter and just praying and crying out to God that you know, like, take, take it from her and give it to me. Cause I would rather have it right. I can deal with it as an adult. I could deal with it, even though I don't want it either. Um, and so you might be in that phase. Um, you know, maybe you're feeling guilty or ashamed of your thoughts and actions. Maybe, you know, you're kind of resentful of, um, somebody in your, in your life that's ill or that you're, you know, that you're grieving over the loss of their health or their finances or, or whatever, um, bargaining, you might be feeling scared, insecure, or anxious, 
ruminating over what could have been, uh, punishing yourself, worrying and overthinking things. Does anybody else do that? Look, <laughs> I am a big, uh, I, I tend to ruminate on things, right? And, and rehash them over and over again. Judging yourself and others, making um, comparisons to other circumstances. That's a big one too. So tips for coping with bargaining is to normalize bargaining and grief. Uh, meaning just that, you know, you recognize where you're at and that you, you can't trade places with someone else, um, giving yourself time and then shifting your focus that, you know, we're best able to move on from the stage when we decide to shift the focus to what we cannot control to everything that we can. And as we begin to make changes in our lives that are more productive for them to move forward. So, you know, again, it might be that, well, I'll just use my example with my daughter again, that there was nothing I could do um, other than help her deal every day with what was to come, right? And oils, <laughs> honestly, during that time was probably the biggest help for her and for me. Um, and now those were our coping uh, me mechanisms and strategies. So the next stage of grief is depression. Many of many people know this stage well, right? Um, so throughout this stage, you're starting to face the reality that your loved one has gone or that, you know, the, the change in whatever it might be. And it finally realize the magnitude of your loss or even upcoming loss. Um, it's also common to experience feelings of emptiness, despair, and isolation. Uh, you may have poor concentration, feelings of excessive guilt or low self-worth, hopelessness about the future, um, thoughts about dying, disrupted sleep, changes in appetite or weight, and feeling very tired or low in energy. And if you're experiencing those things on kind of as an ongoing basis, uh, it might be something to, to take a look at and, and you know, look at your life and see, am I grieving over something? Am I struggling with something more than just being tired every day? Um, and again, we're going to, I'll talk about um, some, some supplements and, and oils that can help with this. Uh, but other ways to cope with depression or those feelings is to exercise regularly, um, ideally getting, uh, you know, seven to eight hours of sleep every night. If we are not sleeping well, our body can't, our body can't, um, uh, support it, right? We, our immune system will go down, our cortisol levels go up. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Um, other things, explore a new skill, maybe take a cooking class, join a book club, um, call and see friends or loved ones who can offer support and join a support group for those who have experienced the loss of a loved one. Um, a lot of churches, uh, it seems like have a grief share, um, group that I know that has been really helpful for people because again, it's, it's just being around other people who are going through this and experiencing it and can relate in a different way. Because I think sometimes when we're in the grieving process, we might feel like we're really alone, right? And that nobody would understand or nobody cares to, um, to understand or to support me. And, uh, so being part of that, part of a, a grief share group can be a real blessing and, um, just reminding you that you're not alone and that people do care. So, um, the last phase of, uh, grief is growth. And you might think, how do I go from depression to growth? Well, uh, this is where we might start construct reconstructing our life and searching for solutions to get through grief. Uh, you might experiment with different strategies that help you cope and, and that you begin feeling better control over your life. So, um, you know, again, it, it's maybe you're starting to look at goals. You're starting to imagine or picture um, what the next step is, you know, when, um, so back when in my daughter's health journey, when the challenge, you know, the, the growth part was when I finally, I think when I stopped fighting the doctor so much or fighting the, the diagnosis and I guess accepted it like, okay, this, we have to do this, but we're going to do this as well. Right. I found that alternative to bring in, to support her body through that process that gave me a feeling of, um, control. And I allowed her to take control over some things, you know, um, food was one of the things that she could control at age, age five, six, seven. And so we allowed, um, you know, her to have, to choose some of her foods as long as she drank her nature, let's say. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, those are signs of growth that we're not just 
pushing back all the time. Um, a sign of growth, you know, might be that you can, uh, that you're, you're just, um, I, I clean my house, right. Or I put something on the calendar or, you know, I, I went out for coffee with a friend or anything like that. So, um, this, all that information, uh, of the stages came from a, um, so an uh, packet I bought on Etsy. So if you if that's something that would you think would help you, just message me and I can um, send you the link for that. So I think it's some really good information. So let's chat about some oils or some products that can help you with grief. Now in the reference guide, there are a ton of products, um, and I'm you know I, I want to encourage you to go and look those up. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's under the emotional part is um, I just looked up under grief and there are so many, but I also asked some friends of mine, like, what have you used recently to help you cope with, with grief or what do you recommend? And one of the oils that, you know, many of them um, recommended, and I totally agree with is um, wine angelica and, oh, I don't have it here. Um, wine angelica is an oil that it really helps protect your energy from other people. Um, and so again, if you're, if you're going through a grieving process, you know, people might be in all different phases of the, the stages of grief that we just talked about. And if you are at, maybe you're feeling, um, I'm, I'm feeling the, uh, depression. Oh, you know what? The last stage is, is acceptance. I didn't talk about that one. Hold on. Um, acceptance doesn't mean that you feel good or right about the loss. It's accepting that a new reality cannot, that the, a new reality cannot be changed is really what acceptance is. So let's say that um, we are, we've lost somebody that we love. We're at the funeral and um, I might be in the, um, well, I might be in the shock and denial phase and somebody comes in and they're angry and ticked, right? If I'm still in shock and like, I just, I'm that numb feeling and somebody comes um, at me and is or around me and, you know, the angry energy is there. You know how that feels, right? It's like, and you, it will, it can create chaos and turmoil in us. And so putting white Angelica literally on our hands and then, you know, coating ourselves and just covering our bodies with it um, can be a good way to protect my energy. And you don't even put it on. You can just do this and, you know, um, like out in front of you and shielding yourself from other people. Um, that can be a great thing. Um, another leader recommended hyssop because grief settles in the lungs. And so think about it when you are grieving something. Um, and again, this could be a death or it could be, you know, the loss of something and it could be an ongoing thing. How does our body respond? You know, oftentimes we, uh, our immune system is depleted. Uh, we get respiratory issues, right? We're more susceptible to that. We can't breathe as well. Um, literally, if especially if we're in the shock and when we hear something um, happen, have you ever like grabbed your heart? Like, oh, I can't believe this happened, right? And our, our chakras in our body, our energy centers in our body literally will shut down to protect it. And so when we grab our heart, it's not that we're having a heart attack, but it's like, Oh, I have to protect this, right? I'm I'm giving myself that my own energetic support here to protect myself from this loss. Um, and so thinking about that in in uh, you know like grief, it settles in our lungs. Uh, so if you're if you're you're grieving something, and I think that's really interesting because again, as I was grieving. Uh, or as I've been working through this grief over relationships, when I'm around these adult children <laughs> of mine, or if I've had a, if I've had a rough interaction, maybe with one of them, um, oftentimes I feel like I can't, you know, my, my, I feel the, the stuff in my throat and maybe it's dripping because I'm not speaking my truth. Um, or I, my lungs, you know, might feel congested. Um, and so it's just another way of my body way for my body to say, Hey, Britta, <laughs> you want to pay attention to this and you want to support and work through this grieving process. Um, you know, and that's, that is obviously the goal. So putting his up, putting respiratory RC Raven, um, those kinds of oils on the chest and, and remembering to do the back as well, because our lungs are on both sides of our body. So make sure that you, that you put it on the back um, also this up, I really like, because it has that deep expectorant type of properties to it. And so, especially if we, um, 
have kind of a chronic thing going on or it's, we're harboring grief, right? We've been holding on to this for a while. Um, putting that on uh, can help you expel the stuff, right? And, and hyssop has those properties. Um, so let's see another, um, my good friend, Danette Goodyear, she said that she's known as the joy lady at many funerals that she's been to. And even in hospital rooms, um, before passing, she always wears joy, even though it's not her favorite, um, but she passes it around. So if you haven't experienced joy, um, she's always, she's told it's a comforting and joyful smell. Now, I will tell you though, this can almost be because it's very high frequency. And when we're grieving, um, you know, gr grief is a low frequency. And so sometimes for some people, it might, it, we might be trying to raise our frequency too much. Um, I have a good friend who, when we got started using oils, she hated the smell of joy. Um, and she realized several, a few years later, when she started using oils, she had lost her mom, um, probably a year before that, I think and um was still grieving over her mom you know the loss unexpected um uh, pain of, of losing her mom or best friend and she wasn't ready to experience joy um however if you've ever heard of my story again with my daughter when she, with le the leukemia um the emotional part of leukemia is depression and so the opposite of that is joy right and so we sonia came up and anointed caden with joy and and she experienced christ um and had that emotional connection then um when she smells this oil you know she would she would get that peace that only comes from from christ is is the only way i can explain it and so um my friend knew about this story and she's like, okay, I'm ready for, and it was probably a year or two after this, right? So she'd been grieving for two or three, four years. And she started to um, just, take, she'd open the cap of the bottle and she'd sprinkle some on her head and close the cap. Or she'd put a roller on it and put it on, roll it on her feet and, and put her socks on and go to bed because she didn't want to smell it. But she knew that this, that it was time to work through some of that grief. And so for her, just doing the, um, the joy, on but in those regards um was enough to work start working through that okay so joy is a powerful oil um peace and calming to diffuse of course is can be really helpful for yourself and other people just as you're going through the process and and to um just to to deal with the, some of the emotions joy over the heart you guys i can't say that enough it's such a powerful oil um i have been recently uh or this summer you know, I've had the, um, the freedom collections. So we have the freedom sleep collection and the freedom release collection. I've had these for years since Gary released them probably eight, 10 years ago. I don't know. And I have started the freedom sleep collection several times and never finished. Cause you're supposed to use this collection for 30 days. And then you move on to the release collection. And last month in June, I started using the freedom um, sleep collection and I did it and I only did it at night. So I did it every night. Um, and what I noticed, cause you, you can do it in the morning and at night, what I noticed by doing that, and it's four oils. So you put freedom on your feet, um, you know, one to three drops on each foot. You do aroma sleep. Um, so here's aroma sleep. Okay, and these all come in the collection. Uh, aroma sleep, one to three drops on the back of the neck. And so I literally just put a few drops and I rub it on the back of my neck. Uh, and then you do uh, valor over the wrists. So a couple of drops, I'm sorry, over the heart and the chest. Because again, we need to um, be brave, right? And, and bring courage into our bodies and allow that to happen. And then inner harmony, one to three drops on each wrist. And I did these for um, a month and I slept so well during the last month. And as I've been thinking about grief and loss and, um, you know, oftentimes our sleep is interrupted when we're, when we are grieving or when we lay down at night, it's like, it's the time when our body might be tired, but our mind may be racing, right? And um, we realize that we're alone or that, you know, they're, um, I don't know, the, we, the emotion comes and hits us again because we're not busy doing things. We're truly just 
you know, are, we're allowing ourselves maybe to be present for the first time all day and all that stuff starts coming up. And what I noticed by doing this freedom um, sleep collection, which is this one, um, is that I, I actually fell asleep faster. I slept deeper and I dream, I dreamt every night. And I know sometimes I re would remember the dreams. I don't, I'm not good at journaling those though, but I always, I always had weird. I mean, some of them were really weird dreams, but they were peaceful dreams. Does that make sense? And so it's almost like subconsciously my, my mind is working through whatever the, the drama, trauma, whatever of the day was. And like my mind, my subconscious is able to resolve that and let it go. And when I would wake up, I would feel at peace. I didn't, I, I don't remember waking up like with 20 things to do that day. Um, you know, I, I would just kind of wake up and go, oh, okay. You know, like I had a really good sleep. Um, and sometimes I remember waking up going, well, that was a really weird dream. <laughs> Uh, but it was very peaceful, right? It wasn't like scary thing. And so this um, freedom sleep collection, um, Gary says the word freedom means different things to different people, such as freedom to follow one's dream, freedom to make one's own decisions, spiritual freedom, and freedom from life's experiences. The freedom sleep collection of essential oils was created to help support a positive energy flow, helping to relax and to calm. And this is a powerful collection. Now I realized last week at convention that I've been doing that collection for a month. So guess what? The last, this week I have moved on to the freedom release collection. And so again, we have to allow our body to sleep because during sleep, um, that's when our body starts to heal and all of our organs will, will, um, you know, they release and they, um, you know, they like flush the toxins and, and they all have a, a cycle, right? Our organs do. And so if we're not allowing, if we're not getting sleep, allowing our body to sleep, then it can't re rejuvenate and recuperate and all of those things. So sleep is first, right? We have to go to sleep and, and sleep well. And, and, and well, doesn't mean that I, I sleep deeply for eight hours, but well means that, I get, I'm, I'm restful, right. And I'm allowing my body the time to recover. So we sleep first and then we move on to the freedom release collection, which is, um, Gary wrote on, on this box, the physical strength combined with emotional and mental clarity and focus is the foundation of a, of a progressive life. The freedom release collection of essential oils was created to bring a sense of balance and harmony that attracts love and joy. It helps promote forgiveness, elevating the mind and bringing out the gentle characteristics within oneself for a positive outlook on life. And isn't that what we all need, right? Whether we're grieving, um, actively grieving, where we recognizing it, or if we're just struggling with things or whatever, this can be an emotional godsend and just working through the next, the next steps, right? So this collection comes with, um, let's say you put freedom again on your feet. So freedom goes on the feet every night. Um, and you get another, uh, 15 ml bottle of that. You put uh, one to a couple of drops on the of joy on the chest over the heart. So instead of valor, this time we're doing joy because again, we need to bring joy into our life. Um, transformation, you guys, transformation is such an incredible blend. If you haven't smelled this one, you can get this one separately. But I am digging this now as I am going through this process. So you put a, um, one to three drops on each wrist of transformation it comes with divine release, which is a very high frequency oil. Um, and this one goes on the temples and the uh, crown chakra. So, you know, I'm kind of putting it here and I'm also putting it up here on the, on my head and then TR care, um, applying to the edges of each ear. So one to three drops. And again, what I've noticed, um, when I'm doing this and this one, I'm doing it at night. And then this morning I did remember to put it on this morning. Um, I am still sleeping really well. And even though I'm, I kind of have that convention hangover, I think, um, I, I still feel like I can deal with every day. Right. And I'm not like, Oh, I'm just so exhausted all the time. So it, um, I just think that these are such great options for us 
Uh, Gary created these collections and, and there's a card. If you don't get one of these in your kit, let me know and I can, I can make a copy and send it to you or um, I can take a picture. You can also Google this and get, and get it. I know it's online, um, but he created these collections for people struggling with emotions. And again, whether we're, we're grieving, whether we have traumatic events that have happened, maybe it you know, happened in the past, maybe it's happening right now, um, all, both either, either way and so many more, for so many more reasons, this is just such a beautiful collection to use to reclaim our own freedom, okay? And that's really what I'm going for. Um, we have a, uh, I have a friend who owns a funeral home and she actually mixes bergamot and orange to diffuse. Uh, at the funeral and uh, before, so visitations and as a, as the family's coming in to to deal with things. So bergamo and orange, she diffuses it. She makes DIY rollers um, for the grieving families. And you know, like what an incredible blessing that would be, right? To be able to, um, again, not that you have to put it on, but just to you know maybe give somebody a little roller and say, this may just help you in in coping this week as you're busy. Um, you know, taking care of all the details of this, um, as you're saying goodbye, as you're grieving, as all those things happen, you know, this, those could be a great, a great gift. Now I want to talk about a couple of supplements too quick. Um, I know I'm going long, sorry. Uh, Cordistop. Okay. This is a fantastic supplement. I'm actually going to read to you out of the, um, field guide here about Cordistop. Um, this is a great supplement for that flight, fight, flight response. Okay. And which many of us will get when we're under stress. So when we're stressed, either physically or psychologically, our adrenals go into overdrive and raise our cortisol levels. High levels of cortisol cause the body to scavenge for protein, to convert into glucose, to send to the brain. So it has enough energy to deal with the perceived stress. Because of high cortisol and protein scavenging, adrenaline levels rise. And adrenaline is that fight or flight or freeze or flee um, hormone that is for short-term increases in energy and strength. Although it's fine for very short term, it has less, it has serious consequences when it happens too frequently. And if you're under a period of a lot of stress or a lot of grief, it's happening probably too frequently. So when, when cortisol is produced too frequently, it can cause fatigue, difficulty maintaining a healthy weight, suppressed immunity, uh, anxiety and depression, and difficulty maintaining optimal heart rate. Chronically elevated cortisol levels affects the HPA axis, which affects all the body's hormones and disrupts the natural feedback loop. This causes the body to be less sensitive to the cortisol stop signal. How many of us just keep going, even though we know our body's saying stop, um, and it creates a vicious cycle of elevated stress hormones and messengers, and that's a root cause of adrenal fatigue. So when the adrenals release cortisol spikes, it creates a short burst of energy followed by a crash with extreme fatigue. In the case of chronic stress, this looks like feeling fine in the morning, but as the day progresses, you become extremely tired or feel overwhelmed, even when contemplating work. Any types of stress will cause the adrenal glands to either overreact or fail to respond. You become um, either become extremely anxious, nervous, or hyperactive, or you feel extremely tired and unmotivated to do anything. Uh, so cortisol is addressed, uh, designed to address how the body reacts to the cortisol that's produced when under stress, both acute and chronic. Cortisol combines herbs and essential oils to help balance the stress response by calming the body and lowering cortisol levels. As cortisol declines, strength and energy return, and the body returns to a state of equilibrium. So this is a phenomenal um, supplement. I take it in, um, when under times of, of intense stress. Um, usually for me, my trigger when I know I need it is like if I am um, biting people's heads off, you know, when you're just like, I am so short with, with people or I'm like, oh, um, last week at convention, we have car trouble and um, dealing with that, I could just feel that tenseness in my body. And I knew I needed to take more of this, right? So Cordistop is a great option for any of those kinds of things. Um, another thing, you know, many times when we're under a lot of stress, we're tired, we're, um, you know, again, grouchy, um, moody. And so Super B is um, 
vital to help us in dealing with that as well. Now, B vitamins are water soluble. They're not stored in the body, so they must be replenished daily. And the benefits include supporting normal cardiovascular and cognitive health, improved mood, and sustained healthy energy levels. Um, let's see, this is a, uh, the B complex is what Super B is. It contains all eight essential energy boosting B vitamins. Also nutmeg essential oil, um, which is good for the adrenals and the heart and bioavailable uh, chelated minerals and folate. So our bodies struggle to absorb and utilize folic acid and we need it in the form of folate for adequate absorption. So, um, and many required the methylated version, which um, this has in it too. So this is a great option for that. And uh, the other supplement is multigreens. I just wanted to point out because I think many people um, skip these supplements and these are, you know, it's, it's great to put oils on topically because, you know, we're, we're, I don't want to say we're just treating symptoms, but we get that immediate, um, benefit, but that will wear off. Right. And so when we support the body from the inside by taking these supplements, um, this could be a great longer term um, options, I guess, let me just say. So this is actually, um, multigreens is like your daily salad in a bottle. It fuels your system with lots of good things to help you feel amazing and increase vitality. Um, it provides a natural, sustainable source for the, uh, oh, let me back up. Okay. It's a blend of spirulina, alfalfa sprouts, barley grass, bee pollen, erythro root, Pacific kelp, and other um, great green things that we need. This nutrient dense chlorophyll supplement combines invigorating greens and essential oils to support overall health, energy levels, and general well being through supporting the glandular, nervous, and circulatory systems. Um, it provides that sustainable energy for the body. It's an excellent source of choline, which is critical for energy production and mental clarity. So, especially if you're dealing with um, grief and loss and stress. Many times we just feel foggy, don't we? Um, or just unclear and like, I don't know what the next move is. And we may even find yourself just sitting there going, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do next, right? Um, and again, I, you know, I have felt that way in the last few months. Like, I don't even know what the next step is um, because of the grieving processes that I'm going through. And so I think, again, recognizing that, giving myself grace for that, and then thinking, what can I do to support my body as I'm going through that and support my brain as I'm going through that? Um, mineral essence is another incredible supplement, you know, that we all need those minerals. And um, even though it doesn't taste great alone, tastes great alone, um, you know, adding it to your ningxia or adding it to the red drink and a glass of water will dilute it down. And it truly just gives what I've noticed is I have clarity and I'm not achy when I think that and with my other things that I take in my drinks. So th those are just things to think about. Um, we talked about our immune system needing to keep it boosted. Whoops. So of course we have inner defense. We have immune pro, which is um, immune supporting as well as it has melatonin in it. So uh, it can help with sleep. Uh, and then we have sleep essence, which is a, um, a melatonin supplement that we have. And then of course, the new brand new immu gummies, um, to help support our bodies as well. So I love that young living gives us so many options to choose from now, you know, we talked about a lot and I didn't even talk about all the oils that are listed. And so you might be like, well, where do I start? Which one do I start with? Um, and I think that that really can, it kind of depends on what you feel like your needs are, because, you know, if you're needing mental clarity and focus to move through the stressful time, um, you, know, you may need, you may need to start with uh, super B, right? If you are at the end of your, your wits end and you're like, I cannot deal with another person or another thing, you may need to start with cortisol. <laughs> Uh, you might need to start with the, the freedom sleep collection because it, you know, you just need to allow your body to truly rest. Um, there's so many different options. And, you know, I would love to sit down with you and, and chat through those. You know, of course we have, gosh, I just, I looked across my room and I'm like, oh, there's a CBD calm roller, right? I didn't even talk about CBD here. 
Um, there's so many options that we could talk about. And so I think that, you know, if you're brand new and you're like, I don't know where to start, then actually I'm going to tell you where to start. what's underneath my, my computer. Um, you can start with the Make a Shift Kit because it's a brand new collection that Young Women just came out with. It has six oils. So this is, it, it kind of brings it down to simple for everybody. So you have uh, lavender and peppermint. So lavender is going to help you sleep. It's going to help you deal with stress. It's going to help you breathe. Peppermint um, will literally clear your airways. It's, it's, I mean, it's like invigorating. It wakes up your mind. Uh, it can help. We talked about grief settling in the lungs. It can help with that, right? It comes with two blends, thieves, which immune supporting, immune boosting and um, purification. So maybe you just have a lot of funky smells going on in your house, right? Um, if it's a, if it's a physical um, sickness, maybe you just need to, you know, kind of clear the air, so to speak, and diffusing thieves or, or putting it on will help with, with that. Um, I actually also like to put thieves around, or not, well, thieves or um, purification actually around my ears when my ears feel clogged, you know, and again, that's going down into my respiratory system, right? So both of those can help with that and with that grief. Um, and then it comes with two blends. It comes with deep relief, which is great for anything discomfort related. And it comes with one of our favorites, stress away, which again, if you're going through stressful times, rolling stress away on it, sound, it might sound too simple, but rolling that on and then taking a breath. And this is what I used to do a lot with my friends. I just roll it on and say, just breathe. And just, they would do this and put their, you know, wrists up to their nose and they would breathe. And I would just literally physically watch their tight shoulders where they breathe. And their, their shoulders would just relax within seconds even. Um, and that is the gift of these oils because they immediately have a reaction on the body. So this collection, it's called, again, Make a Shift. It comes with a diffuser. So you can, you can diffuse in your home. It's $112, 112 PV. Ask your friend, whoever showed this or invited you to this class um, for their referral link or their affiliate link it'll save you 10% off. And it's such an easy way to get started with oils that you literally could use today. You could open the box and use it and it makes sense to use it today. Um, and then once you get started with that, then we can move on to the next phase, right? Where, well, or you could add on, you know, like I'm tired all the time. I need some super B or I need some cordyceps. I need, um, you know, some other oils specifically for that. So if you're already a member or when you join and you want to be, um, get the best bang for your buck, put all that on, on loyalty rewards. This is our monthly program where you can earn free product and free points um, to, for more free product later. And it just makes sense, right? We all want to be smart, savvy shoppers, and we want the best deal for our buck, the best, biggest bang for our buck. Um, that's what we're here for is we're here to help guide you in what is important to you and what will meet your needs. So please reach out to whoever shared this with you, reach out to me so I can get you started. Um, and we want to be connected with you. We want to be your support and your encouragement. We want to cheer you on. We want to cry with you. We want to go through all of it with you. So um, thank you for watching. I look forward to joining you uh, at some point on your, your oily journey. And um, yeah, let us just let us help you. So have a great night. And I'm going to stop the recording. And then the rest of us can share some more stories or ideas.